What's going on YouTube? Today I have a little impromptu video. I just finished a training session and I need to talk to you guys about something as well as teach you something. So stay with me. Let's get into it. All right, so check this out. It is currently Friday. The Masters just started yesterday. Bryson DeChambeau had a phenomenal first round and he is currently leading. Now, on Monday, I broke the ball speed world record at 241.7, yes, 0.7 miles per hour. Now, why I wanted to make this video specifically, and I do, again, I said I was gonna teach you something, so stay with me. Don't go anywhere, need you to stay with me. But I was getting so many hate comments and it was crazy how many hate comments I got on me breaking the ball speed world record for lots of different reasons, but one in particular stood out to me that I wanna talk about today, and that was that speed is pointless in golf. So we need to talk about why you need to gain club speed, and then I'm also gonna give you a little trick on how to gain club speed so you can hit the ball further and score better. So an Arcos golf study quite literally has shown countless studies that the quickest way to lower your handicap is to gain 10 yards of distance off the tee. The study showed that if you gain 10 yards of distance off the tee, your average score would drop by 1.8 strokes. So for the sake of it, we're gonna call that two strokes off your score. Yes, I'm rounding up, do not care. But if you gain 30 yards of distance off the tee, you're gonna take about six strokes off your score it's gonna be a lot more fun playing golf and you're gonna play a lot better. Not only that, there was another study done by Arcos that also showed for every three yards you gain off the tee, you can be one yard less accurate and still score better. So when everybody's talking about, oh, you're so inaccurate when you swing super fast, you can afford to be less accurate and still score better but that doesn't mean that you have to be less accurate, which is what everybody talks about. So when you see me swinging out of my absolute shoes, trying to PR and try to set ball speed records, I'm not doing that for the sake of golf, first of all, and obviously I'm not trying to hit a fairway. If I go play around the golf, I'm not gonna be swinging that fast, but here's what it does do. It breaks that ceiling so that my nervous system and body are used to moving that fast, and then I can dial it back because now I have speed reserve. You need speed reserve. You have to be uncomfortable in training for club speed. And to go back for a sec, when I said three yards gained off the tee, you can afford to be one yard less accurate. For every one mile an hour of club speed you gain, just one mile per hour, that's three more yards. So if you gain five, 10 miles per hour, we're talking about 15 to 30 yards, your score is gonna drop by six strokes, you can be less accurate off the tee, and you're gonna score better and play better golf. So now we need to talk about how you can do that and actually take what you saw in my ball speed world record into your own training to play better golf. All right, so check this out. Gaining speed and getting that speed reserve is super important, again, because you're not gonna swing that fast on the course, but when you dial it back, you're gonna be a heck of a lot more accurate and it's gonna feel so easy on the course. You also have a little bit of next gear. You'll start to develop a second, a third, a fourth gear so that if you are trying to hit a little bit further on the course, you can, but your distances are already gonna be further with less effort, which means you're gonna have more endurance so you can play more golf. You're not gonna be as tired on the back nine or if you're playing 36 or if you're playing over the course of multiple days in tournaments. But not only that, when I'm talking about having speed reserve, there's a lot of different things you can do. So I don't know why I have driver. Like I said, impromptu video. So let me show you something here. Got me an iron. So I have a five iron here. Now, there's a lot of ways I can hit a five iron. You've seen me online hit them a whole different bunch of ways. But if you're gonna see me on the course and I'm hitting an iron, I'm not gonna swing absolutely crazy. Like, this is my speed reserve. I have the ability to do it more of a long drive swing, have the ability to swing fast. Okay, so that was 124 mile per hour club speed with a five iron. Now, am I gonna swing like that on the course? No, why would I? Well, okay, maybe I would, but <laughs> that's a different story. Should you? No, if you're trying to play good golf, no. But having the ability to swing this club 124 miles per hour allows me to can take a more controlled swing so I can step on the tee box with a five iron and now play normal golf. 
very controlled swing at 119.6 miles per hour. Let's just real quick. Carry 266 yards. So I can step on a tee box, hit this five iron 280 with a very controlled swing because I have speed reserve. And that 124 isn't all I have in the tank. The reason I train club speed like this and the reason you should too is to create speed reserve. So that again, you can hit that nice little 120, okay. <laughs> now a lot of people aren't gonna swing this 120 miles per hour, but imagine if you gain 10 miles per hour on all of your clubs, you're gonna hit the ball significantly further with less effort, but you have to break through that ceiling first and get uncomfortable. So in order to swing like that, do you know how many countless reps I had to have swinging like this? 126 miles an hour. I have to swing fast in order to have that speed reserve and come back. And it takes rep after rep after rep, training your nervous system and not paying attention to where the ball goes, which is what I need to talk to you about today. You guys have to stop caring where the ball goes for a little bit. I don't mean when you're playing, I mean when you're training. That's why I only have club speed up today, is because I need you guys to understand that it doesn't matter if you slice the ball, it doesn't matter if you hook the ball, it doesn't matter if you top the ball, I don't care really what happens when you're training club speed. Because if you're focused on hitting it straight every single time, you're going to be holding yourself back, trying to find the center of club face and thinking about too many things to actually gain speed. Get uncomfortable, start swinging faster so that you can train your nervous system and body to move quicker and quicker and quicker. And then when you pull back, you can start working on ball flight and stuff, but that pulling back is going to be faster than you used to be. So let me go back to driver here and start showing you how you can implement this with your driver as well. Now with your driver, I don't care if you're focused on not throwing it over the top and working on club face and not worrying about slicing it and oh, that went 10 yards right, I need to hit it more straight and oh, that spun too much and my angle of attack wasn't that good so I need to do this and the dynamic loft needs to be... Guys, you're overcomplicating the system and yes, I have tons of videos talking about all these different ways to hit the ball further, which is great, but you need to train club speed as well. The faster you train club speed and the more club speed that you can gain by not caring where the ball goes is going to make you hit it straighter. Circling all the way back to Bryson leading the Masters. Now, I don't know how he finished. Again, I'm recording this before the end of even day two, but Bryson has speed reserve. He created speed by training for long drive. And I'm not saying you need to train for long drive, but you need to implement some of these techniques to be a better golfer. He has developed a swing that can swing 150 miles an hour at his peak long drive. He could get 220 ball speed, and now he dials it way back on the course and is way more accurate because he has that speed reserve, and he's still one of the furthest guys in golf while not trying to hit it that far on the course because he can focus on accuracy. So when you're hitting drivers and practicing, start swinging when club speed's up, or if you're at a range and you don't have the ability to hit on simulators like this where you can put just club speed up, you guys gotta kinda get through your brain that it's okay to hit bad shots when you're working on something specific. Hitting bad shots is good at certain times. Of course not in the tournament, but when you're practicing for club speed, the only thing you should focus on is club speed. So go buy yourself a small little like PRGR unit, which is a couple hundred bucks. You can get them at thespeedtood.com. That's gonna read your club speed. You can take it out to the range. If you have a GC quad, if you have a track man, if you have something like that, start just focusing on club speed and start trying to train better. So if I hit this shot right here, and I'm swinging decently fast right now, we'll see. Perfect example, because I hit that like absolute dog poop. <laughs> so I healed that. Terrible smash factor is a 1.39 smash factor. The thing went absolutely nowhere. Not good ball speed for me, not a good ball strike. Nothing was good about that. It was 145 miles an hour. The only thing I should think about after that swing is how can I swing 146 miles an hour? It's not, oh, okay, now I gotta find the face. I, I know what I did wrong, I did this, I did this. Nope, focus on just swinging faster. So poor hit there. What do I do to follow it up? 
try to swing faster. Set another ball on the tee. And for example, like say that thing snap hooked on the course, on the range. Say, not on the course, on the range. Say that snap hook, say that sliced. The only thing you should focus on is the club speed on that and the feel of that. The only thing you should focus on next swing is swinging faster for that. Hundred forty-eight miles an hour. There you go. So you're gaining a little bit of club speed, and just keep beating that drum until you gain more club speed and keep building up. Now, for the sake of things, I want to hit at least one hundred fifty while I'm talking. <laughs> but you guys have to focus on breaking through your barrier. If you're not breaking through your barriers, you're not going to be able to score better golf. There's only so much you can do chipping and putting. You're going to miss putts each round. You're going to have chips that could have been closer. But if you hit it further off the tee, you're going to have less clubs into the green. You're going to have shorter shots in the green. Your dispersion near the green is going to be tighter. You're going to have more putts. I'm not saying don't practice putting. I'm not saying that's an important, not an important part of your game, but you need to train club speed and that will in turn make you a better golfer. So when people are saying that all this long drive stuff's completely useless, did you hit the fairway? I don't care how fast you swung. Again, that swing right there is 148 miles an hour. That should be cheered for when you're training versus the first swing at 145. Even if that 145 mile per hour swing went 40 yards further and it was an absolute bomb, when you're training for speed and trying to gain yardage, root on the faster swings, not the further hits. So when you keep doing that and keep doing that, you raise your ceiling, and then you can start trying to hit it more accurately. So keep swinging faster and faster and faster, and eventually you'll start hitting it better. Be able to pull down, swing 80%. Now, the last thing I need to talk to you about is another way that you can do that. And that would be right here with my friend, the little speed toad. So the speed toad, a lot of you guys have heard of stack system, a lot of you have heard of speed sticks. Well. I created the speed toad with my training partner Bryce because our speed stick speeds and stack system speeds and other training aids weren't actually carrying over into our drivers. There's a big importance of actually training with your own driver shaft and the speed toad pops right on to your own driver shaft. All you do is pop off your head and now you have your own speed training aid. One of the best parts about this, other than speed training with your own shaft, it is lighter so that you'll be able to move faster and train your nervous system, again, breaking through those ceilings so that your new 80%, 90% is a lot higher than it used to be and you'll be able to hit longer drives on the course. So grabbing something like this will allow you to move faster, but there's also no ball there. So now you can train without your brain slowing you down, trying to hit it more accurate. So not only do you get the benefit of your body moving faster, not only do you get the benefit of training with your own shaft, but you also get the benefit of the ball is not there so you can really push yourself as hard as possible to gain club speed. So grab this. We now have a Speed Toad app that has tons of drills on it for you to gain club speed. All you have to do is train with this one to two times a week. Start focusing on club speed over accuracy for a small period of time. And maybe that period of time is once a week. Once a week, you're focusing on club speed. The other time you go to the range, you're focusing on accuracy. Your speeds will still increase every time you train. All right, I know I'm rambling a little bit. I'll wrap up here in a second, but grab yourself some training tools, start swinging faster, get wild, look uncomfortable. Your body will start finding better positions. You'll start having better technique because the only way to be fast is to have good technique. And the only way to get faster is to have better technique. So that's why it's something like the speed toad will actually train you to have a better swing because it works on sequencing. It works on timing. It works on all that stuff that carries over into your golf swing to make you faster. So in summary, <laughs> I've talked a lot this video and I apologize. Thank you for staying with me. In summary, you guys gotta stop focusing on where you're hitting the ball and start focusing on speed momentarily. You will become a better golfer for it. You will shoot better scores. And again, look at that five iron example. You don't have to swing out of your shoes every time you're on the course. I'm not asking you to. I'm asking you to train like an athlete 
so that golf becomes easy for you. You start hitting the ball further and you start shooting better scores. All right, my cameraman is telling me to wrap it up and I need to get out of here because I have ranted and rambled too much today. Uh, appreciate all your love and support. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later. All right, I gotta say one more thing. <laughs> I'm not mad about all the comments and all the hate comments and stuff. I'm not trying to defend myself or anything like that. It's genuinely that I want you guys to get better at golf and I want you to have fun doing it. And there's this mindset of speed equals bad in golf. And we gotta, we gotta get rid of that. Like it's good to hit the ball further. It's good to have fun while training. It's good to be passionate about stuff and it's good for your score to actually speed train. So again, hate's fine and all that stuff. Take it with a grain of salt, but I want to help you guys. So if anyone's watching this and they're hesitant about speed training, please give it a try you're gonna have a blast and it's going to be awesome thank you again see you guys later for real this time <laughs>